Hi, Ezekiel Callahan with Raptor Chatter here. And I know a lot of people have already talked about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and its plot and its characters, or sometimes lack thereof for the plot. However, this time I'm going to talk about the science, and some of the science that is and isn't accurate in the movie. So before I get fully started, I do want to mention there will be spoilers, so again, you have been warned. So to start with, the raptor should have feathers, and probably a few of the other dinosaurs too. For example, the Gallimimuses, which are in the movie as well. And also, the Velociraptors, if Velociraptors and not Deinonychus, should be smaller. However, they seem to have been based off of Deinonychus, especially from the book where Michael Crichton specifically mentions it as Velociraptor and Tyrops, which is supposed to be Deinonychus and Tyrops. During the movie, there's a scene where Brachiosaurus is trying to get on the boat to get off the island and sadly fails. However, it would have had some level of self-preservation and just jumped off the dock to keep swimming. It's not like it would stop there and just burn to death. In the scene featuring Baryonyx, Claire, and the tech guy, the tech guy grabs onto a chair to try and use as a step stool. However, the Baryonyx also bites onto this chair. And while, yes, Baryonyx could certainly break the chair, as it is 30 feet long and weighs multiple tons, I feel like the tech guy would probably let the chair go before giving the Baryonyx a chance to break it. In the beginning of the movie, a group of the scientists from InGen, the bad guys of this film, end up going to the island to try and get a piece of the Indominus Rex DNA from the previous movie. The bones of the Indominus Rex are found inside the tank of the Mosasaur, where it had died in the previous movie. However, whether or not the bones would still be there after such time is somewhat doubtable, as A, they likely would have been eaten by the Mosasaur, and B, if they hadn't, they probably would have decayed over time anyway. And Mosasaurs specifically would have been much more likely to eat this, as they did have articulating jaws somewhat like snakes that would be able to take wide bites out of something as large as the Indominus. Also, the Mosasaur eventually escapes and bites a guy off of a ladder that's hanging from one of the helicopters, and I'm not sure if the helicopter would still be able to fly after a force like that, and I feel like the helicopter also would have crashed, as they can be stable, but sudden large forces of many, many ton creatures probably aren't great for the engine. One of the main premises and plot points of the movie is that the island is going to erupt into a violent volcanic explosion. And while yes, this kind of explosion can occur, there's some features of it that just seem unrealistic. For example, the lava that's flowing at it during one scene with Chris Pratt seems to be flowing very quickly compared to what this kind of lava would normally do, as this kind of felsic explosive lava is even slower than what was depicted on screen. Additionally, the way we can identify this as being a felsic eruption is the large pyroclastic flow that occurs, where there's a large cloud shot up into the sky which then collapses down parts of the mountain that Chris Pratt outruns, despite the fact that these pyroclastic flows travel normally at least 100 miles per hour, if not more. And so really, Chris Pratt's character shouldn't be worried about the dinosaurs, but really the next Olympics, because he should dominate those. During the scene with the Indoraptor in the mansion, there is a point in the movie where the little girl, Claire, and Owen are able to escape for a brief time and shut off all of the lights so that they can try and hide and escape from the creature. However, this is a dinosaur that's been bred specifically to hunt and be trained to hunt and fight people. I don't know why you would disadvantage yourself like that by turning out the lights, when it's much more likely that this kind of a dinosaur, even a hybrid, has much better night vision, which is again shown as soon as the lights come back on and it is staring straight at them. During the movie, they specifically mention the group of dinosaurs known as tetanurans, which was a large part of the theropods that existed during the Mesozoic Age. However, the tetanurans all have something in common that is wrong, and that's that they have broken wrists. Generally speaking, the tetanurans have two directions that their wrists and palms can face. The palms can either face towards each other or face upwards, as opposed to the popular depictions we see in the movie where they are turned this way. And that breaks the wrists, and broken wrists make for sad dinosaurs. The one theropod that gets away from this is the Carnotaurus, as it didn't even have wrist bones. So advantage to the Carnotaurus, and pro tip from it, if you don't want broken wrists, don't have wrists. As for the specifics for why they named Tenurin specifically, one of the dinosaurs, 
Blue, the Velociraptor, needed a blood transfusion, and their paleo vet, who was there, said they needed it from a tetan urine as a donor. And so this still opens up a wide amount of variability in what blood you're specifically going to get. For example, the Baryonyx that I mentioned earlier and Allosaurus were both captured and also are tetan urines, but had already diversified from the group that would become the raptors at least 60 million years before the Deinonychus, if we assume blue is Deinonychus, had even evolved. So there's a lot of leeway in how closely related these species were. And it would be better to say something like Manoraptor forms, as that would allow you to get something from Gallimimus, and rather than something like the Tyrannosaurus rex that they do use for the blood transfusion, would be less inclined to eat you. And so that's going to be a really brief overview. Um, there's still other things that other people have mentioned that has been wrong. And so for this section, we're going to be looking at the species that take more of a starring role in this movie and analyze how accurate their rendition on the screen would be to real life. So starting with Carnotaurus, one of my personal favorites, which is shown fairly accurately with its squat face and stubby little four-fingered arms. Additionally, it has the row of scutes along its side and back that we know existed because the only specimen that we have of Carnotaurus was preserved with skin impressions intact. I'd give it an 8 out of 10. It really needed more screen time. Moving on to the Cynoceratops, I don't understand why they put these holes on its frill that it doesn't seem to have had. While yes, the skull itself does have holes through it, there's no reconstructions that have these, as it's somewhere that either a predator could grab onto very easily, or it would get branches and just debris stuck inside of it. It really doesn't seem like that great of a design. I'd give it like a 4 out of 10. It should have been a Diabloceratops. Hashtag save Grand Staircase. Baryonyx was never able to show off its namesake. Its name, meaning heavy claw, the claw was never shown. It was used just as another large predator, and not the unique predator that it was, hunting and fishing in the ancient waterways. And on that note, much more likely to be around waterways than in tunnels. I'd give it a 6 out of 10. It needs more claw. So next, the Mosasaur, which yes, is not a dinosaur. However, it does have a strong presence in the beginning of the movie. And also was not the size of a battleship like the one in the movie seems to be. Additionally, at the end, it's hunting surfers, and I don't see why it would be doing that, as something like a 300 pound tuna would probably be a lot more satisfying for it than a 150 pound surfer. Overall, 5 out of 10 for it. Use it sparingly. Comsignathus gets its one really good shot that we saw in the trailer, which is great as an establishing shot, except it should have been feathered. Also, there's a few shots where it's running away, but that establishing shot is good, and it would have been really cool to see it be feathered, as it was one of those small dinosaurs that, at least for most of the public, could get away with it, and it would at least help start to promote that idea more. I'd give it a 5 out of 10. 7 out of 10 with feathers. Moving on to the Brachiosaurus, it is large and, again, very tall, has nostrils in the right places and everything else like that. However, I still think its rendition in the first movie is better for an establishing shot. It is still good to see coming back in the movie in this way. I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Its last scene wasn't as sad as it could be, because it could have tried swimming. From the same time period as the Brachiosaurus, Allosaurus was also featured in the movie, and its rendition I personally don't like that much, mainly because the Allosaurus did have ridges over its eyes. However, the more swept back horns that are shown in this movie seem unlikely for it to actually have. A number of the Allosaurus specimens we have show a great number of injuries, showing that their life was hectic and dangerous. Something as far swept back as the horns that it had in the movie seems unlikely as they would be more prone to breakage. And so, it's not my favorite rendition. On the other hand, it is a great example of a great American dinosaur, arguably more so than T-Rex. I'd give it still a 6 out of 10. The Ankylosaurus in the movie does seem to be fairly accurately armored, though it is hard to tell if they did armor the eyelid or not, because they did actually have armored eyelids. In the scene where some of the dinosaurs and some of the people are running away from the pyroclastic flow, a number of Ankylosauruses do go over the cliff as well and end up in the water and almost immediately flip upside down. While this may seem accurate as their hard bony plates would have weighed them down, it has been shown through a recent study that they wouldn't actually flip upside down until after they had already died and then bloated. 
So this kind of rendition is somewhat inaccurate, although they would likely eventually end up upside down and sinking to the bottom of the sea. Overall, five out of 10, they get hurt a lot, but they do get more screen time. Then the pteranodons. They fly off at the end of the movie and are shown perching on large skyscrapers. However, this doesn't seem to be accurate as they could not quite perch like our modern day birds do. Their feet were built much more like a bat's, meaning they would have to hang upside down or simply walk across the ground, as we do have trackways from pteranodons or at least similar species of pterosaur. Additionally, they should have smaller crests, as these were all females, at least under this rendition of the park. And we do see sexual dimorphism in the species, with some of them being very large and with large crests, and others of the species being much smaller with wider hips and a much smaller crest. Just something for consideration in the future. Four out of 10. It existed and was nice to see it getting a more establishing shot at the end. The Tyrannosaurus Rex got big, and notably so. While in real life it was probably about 40 feet, the one in the movie seemed to be closer to 50, which is a noticeable difference. We also know that Tyrannosaurus Rex lived fast and died young. The oldest specimens of it we have died at about 30 years of age. And this being the same T-Rex from the first movie, which came out 25 years ago, the same year I was born, it's getting up there in age. It should be moving a little bit slower. I'd give it a 7 out of 10. It wasn't in the movie too much, so it let some of the other dinosaurs shine. But also it killed off a Carnotaurus, which again is one of my favorites. So, a little sad about that. The raptors were covered in a little more detail earlier in that, yes, they need feathers, and they should probably be called Deinonychus, not Velociraptor. Additionally, the wrists are also broken, as with many of these species. Overall, 5 out of 10. Blue only really shows up when there's plot relevance for her to show up at immediately that point, and so it's hard to tell how much work they actually put in, especially as a lot of the scenes with Blue are fairly darkly lit. On to the newest, and I guess also not the newest, dinosaur of this, as it is a hybrid and not a true dinosaur, the Indoraptor, the main villain dinosaur, was actually a very interesting way for them to take the movie, and I think it works quite well as a hybrid and as the villain, taking on more of a xenomorph, as in from Alien, type role. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 for the design, as it does seem to be a much more characterized dinosaur rather than the Indominus Rex, which just acted like a large T-Rex and didn't have as much personality and defining traits. And so while some of the movie had questionable plot devices, I think this one worked the best. So that's my scientific review of the movie. If people really want a review of the movie as a movie, I can try and do that. However, it would be different from most of my content on here, but I would be willing to do it. Overall, I think there's a good movie in there. I think if they had stuck by the mansion more, it would have been better rather than having the first half be on the island. So other than that, you know, everyone take care, be safe, don't go extinct.